Hi, in this video we'll be doing the remaining question for stationary waves. That should include question 37, 39, 41, 42, 45, and 46. So make sure you try to do them first and I'll explain to you one by one. Pause the video now. A few moments later. Question 37. If you can recall the general case that we talked about earlier in the previous video, then you can remember for one open one end, it will be the special case where you only have the odd number for the multiple of frequency. For both fixed end and open end, it will just be all the integer. So in this case, the second harmonic is going to be the twice of the first harmonic. So this is pretty much the answer. Of course, if you really have to show how you can obtain that, you can deduce um, like how we did earlier by drawing the diagram. So for full fixed end, this is the first harmonic. And then uh, the length is going to be a fixed value L. And for the second harmonic, it's going to be something like this, right? And so uh, using how the L would equal to how many lambda, you can deduce the same answer. Question 39, it asks you to draw the third harmonic for the one open, one closed system. And so um, if you don't know how to count it, then just draw from the first one. So what you will start with is probably something like this. And then the first harmonic, if you recall, is something like this. This is the simplest one. And then you can have the second harmonic to be something like this because at the end, this has to be the note, all right? Here has to be the note. So then the third harmonic is just adding onwards. Adding one more of this. Okay, so this is going to be the third harmonic. Question 41, this is the same setting of the experiment that we mentioned earlier about finding the speed of sound using the standing wave. So if you don't, remember at all you may want to revisit that uh, video and uh, learn the details and so back here uh, one problem with this question is uh, they didn't explicitly say which harmonic it is so i think it's not really good that they didn't say so so i assume that it is the first harmonic and therefore the diagram should look something like this okay this is like the water because you should know that it involves water that to control the length of the tube. And here, this is going to be 20 cm. And then the first harmonic would look like this. So this should be a quarter of the lambda equal to the length, which is 20 cm. And so in this case, then we can deduce that lambda would equal to 2 times 4 80 cm. Then using this and the wave formula, then we can deduce the speed of sound by multiplying the frequency and the lambda in meter 0 0.8. And using the calculator, we will be able to find out the answer to be 341.6. So I think we will run it to 366 to 342 meter per second, which is, yeah, very close to how we perceive, how we understand normally. Part B is asking you the next length, I assume is total length of the air column when the next Lao San is heard again. So that should be the second harmonic. And I recommend you to draw it out. So how it should look like, should be something like this. Okay, so you can again try to count how many lambda are there and that should be 3 over 4 lambda equal to the new length, so I'll call it L. Do remember that in this question, the lambda is going to be the same because the frequency is going to be the same. They didn't say you have, ch you have to change it. And also the speed of sound is going to be the same because it's the same medium, the same air. And so in this case, then you will be able to find L directly, which is, um, well, simply 3 over 4 times 80 cm, and that should get you 60, I think, yeah, 60 cm, and that is the length for the air column. 
Question 42. This is a simple but interesting question, and you can express in a pretty elegant way, right, mathematically. So it's asking you in a both open end system for two consecutive harmonics. You have this and this frequency. So how you can express this in mathematics is you can write f n plus one. The n plus one harmonic is going to be this this much of hertz, and then f n the end harmonic is going to be 300 hertz. And if you try to write a general relationship of f n plus one and f n to f one, which is the first harmonic then you know it is n plus 1 times of f1 and this is n times of f1 for the nth harmonic and then once you list out this then the presentation is so nice and also it's very clear uh, the answers here already so what you have to do simply is uh, therefore f1 is going to be n plus 1 this one which is uh, fn plus 1 minus n times f1 right mathematically they are equal and therefore it's 360 minus 300 and therefore it is 60 hertz and so going back to what harmonics they are then obviously uh, this one is going to be the sixth harmonic and this one is going to be the fifth harmonic you can of course uh, express the mathematical equation by yourself it should be very simple for part b it asks you the length of the pipe so uh, what you can do is you can think about the first harmonic for two open system so it should be something like this which is the length itself equals to half right this is half only half of the lambda and then uh, that should be related to 60 hertz when we try to use the wave equation so v is known to be 340 frequency is going to be 60 and lambda is going to be 2 times l in this case so then we can find out l to be um, 2.83 recurrent so we should keep free sec fix or 2.83 simply in meter yeah because everything else is in si unit so yeah 2.83 meter next question this is quite challenging yet quite inspiring also question 8 is asking you uh, what does that actually mean by wave speed for standing wave and that is very inspiring really because we are we are saying standing wave are not moving right so how come they will still have speed and so for the answer uh, is that when we say standing wave is standing they only appear to be standing only um, the formation, as we said in a previous video, which you can refer to again, it is formed by two traveling waves, right? They superpose uh, together, and when they have a specific frequency, then that will form the sending wave. So when we talk about the wave speed, this is talking about the speed for that traveling wave. Uh, waves, which form the stationary wave or right, ascending wave so it's referring to that original the very beginning that traveling waves part b is asking you to consider the diagram and very nicely i think this uh, if, if you really like maths and physics then you definitely would like to know this equation and try to understand and think through this this is an equation describing the string itself and so if you try to look at this I want you to think about what does this actually mean by the 5.0 here and the 45 pi t here okay so you may need to recall what you learned in mathematics about the graph of a sine wave and cosine wave and so here 5.0 is actually the amplitude of that wave function so uh, notice that this is the equation for point p all right so this is talking about how point p will be moving up and down throughout the time 
but not the other point because for the other point the amplitude will be different obviously and so you can't just use one equation to describe all the points unless you make this equation more complicated uh, with a factor of the position as well then yes you, you can express that also and this is only specific for point P anyway so 5.0 is the amplitude so that means here this will be uh, actually amplitude is only like this so this will be 5 and in fact this is not going to be very useful uh, at all in this question so the more important information that we need to extract is here because this is why it behave periodically right and so if you try to think about one cycle for the cosine function that's going to be 2 pi right then using this information then you can get to know uh, how much time it takes for one period and we just have to equate this by 2 pi 45 pi t then we can find out at what t then this whole thing cosine this whole thing will equal to 2 pi so um, well obviously then in this case we will find out the answer to be 2 over 45 and then this will give us the information which is 0 0.0444 okay and if you try to calculate the frequency because this is going to be the period 0 0.0444 is going to be period then the frequency is simply 1 over t this is actually the big t okay and that will be 1 over this and that is going to be 22.5 hertz and this is going to be a very important information because we can then use this to apply and substitute into the wave equation simply so v equals to f lambda v is given to be 1 x t and frequency as we calculated then we can find the lambda so lambda will act simply so it should be act meter okay uh, you may argue that hey um, the string I mean from the diagram is appear to be a curve so if you try to strengthen it it should be longer so I guess here uh, we have ignored it sorry this is physics so since we know the wavelength is going to be x meter then we just take this as the length of the string so that's the assumption that we have made here. Part C, state the phase difference between point P and point Q. And this is something that we have talked about and learned in another previous video. And in this simulation, you can illustrate uh, between the two half, consecutive half of the standing wave, you can see they will have a phase difference of 180 degree because they are anti-phase basically. Uh, if you are like the one next to each other, I mean one next next to each other, so like here and then here, then they will be in phase. But the one that is literally next to you will be anti-phase. So back to this question, this is like simply next to each other. So you can see they are anti-phase. And uh, which means the phase difference you can say about uh, should be pi in radian. And so for the equation, all right, it shouldn't be that mathematically demanding because P and Q, they are both, I mean, from the diagram, you can tell they are both uh, the point on the string with the largest amplitude. So their amplitude is simply the same. So what I would write about the equation for Q is simply copy this uh, for Q. It will simply be having a negative there. So in that case, it will be anti-phase and of course if you really want to start from a more mathematical point of view then you can say since they have a pi phase difference then what you can say about this is instead of writing this directly you can write you can borrow from the equation from above uh, and write that is going to be 5.0 cosine 45 pi t plus pi so if you have studied maths 
and think about and understand how cosine theta plus pi would work, you know that uh, it will become still cosine but negative. So eventually uh, you get back to what we mentioned, negative the whole thing and then take away the pi inside the bracket. If you don't understand how this becomes this, then ask your math teacher or ask me. Question 46. So in this question, you have to visualize this so that you can understand what happened. So you have got a stick, which is 1.2 meter, and now you're trying to hit this with a hammer, and that will create a wave traveling along. This is going to be longitudinal wave, but yeah, let me just draw this. And then travel back to this. Okay, and according to the question, it would take 0 0.18 milliseconds. So I will write divide thousand second to help myself to understand and not to make careless mistake. So for A, explain why the hammer will rebound. And so obviously uh, what you can say is uh, the hammer will create a wave along the rod. At the other end of the rod, the wave will be reflected and then that would um, transfer the energy to the hammer and that's why the hammer will rebound. So you should be able to write this down uh, by your own. So part B, calculate the speed of sound. So uh, this time you don't have to use the wave equation because it's more about the echo. So uh, we just have to know that the distance, cause you travel back and forth, is going to be speed equal distance over time. So the distance is going to be 1.2 times 2. The time is going to be the one that it takes and then you can find the velocity so it's going to be one three 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 i will take two six fix so one point three times the power of one two three four meter per second and that makes sense to me part c is that the hammer created a standing weight within the rock and it is also the first harmonic and therefore as you calculate the frequency. So this is a very typical question. And uh, the only thing that you need to think about is, is this a two open system or two fixed end system or one open, one fixed end? It doesn't really matter, however, uh, because you know the rod is going to be symmetrical. So it must be either the two open or two fixed system. And so either way, the first harmonic is going to have the L, which is the length, to be half of the lambda. So this would be the information that you need. And by using what we have got from the previous part with the wave equation, then you can find the answer. Because uh, V is going to be, I'll use the whole number. And the frequency is the one that you want to find. And lambda is going to be uh, twice of the length, which is 1.2. And so you can find the frequency, which is supposed to be 5555.4. Five, five, five so rounding it up to 2 sig fig is going to be 5.6 times 10 to the power of 3 hertz. And so if you want to think about whether it's 2 open end or 2 fixed end, think about it. You can let me know in the comment section below. And that is all for this video. I'll see you again next time. Bye.